All right, so uh, welcome back. Well, that was that particular court judgment, but we'll come back uh, a little bit and take a look at what the uh, INEC response was in that particular state because they, they also broke it down a little further. But now at the moment, we've got uh, Mr. Norris in Quakers, a Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you for coming on this morning. My pleasure. Well, that particular judgment uh, it generated different reactions. Uh, many just thought, okay, where is all of this headed? What was the implication of that? But uh, much as I next spoke uh, about this concerning, yes, they, they are in receipt of that particular judgment, but part of what they said at the time, too, was that this was in respect of Tafar Balewa governorship constituency only, and that it does not include the Tafar Balewa state constituency. So <laughs> it sounds confusing. It really does sound confusing if you've not been following the details of what's going on. But first of all, just break it down for us in terms of what they mean by an ex parte order, because many will be looking to the ultimate implication and how long it will take, because you have to have a date where all of this will be sorted. How is this expected to play out when you have to deal with an ex parte order? First, an ex parte order has a lifespan. Oftentimes, it's 14 years. Now, I'm happy with the position taken by INEC by stating that this is a post-election matter and that the only competent court, as it were, to look into it is actually the election petition tribunal. That's why they were challenging the court's jurisdiction. Yes, but you see the mistake they, they made from the um, statement of Ahmed Raji S.A.N. is that the judge stated um, his order was directed at INEC, come before me, show cause why I shouldn't grant the ex parte order. Now, at that instance, it's no longer ex parte. It has become a notice. Ex parte is what you obtain without notice to the other side. Now, the judge is now saying, so what he has done is he's translated the ex parte application to an interim and interlocutory application. Is that why? They, because Rashi was saying that they were now looking into the substantive matter. Yes, because the idea now is haven't been notified of the action in court because ex parte is a situation where you go to court without recourse to the other side because you want to have some preservative order. Now, if the court now says that, look, I'm not going to grant the preservative order, put the other side on notice. Let them come to this court and state or convince me or show cause why I shouldn't make this particular order now. Is that in order? But, like, it's, it's, it's neither here nor there. I, I'm one of those who believe that you either decline or you state to the applicant that is before you to put the other side on notice by serving all the processes in question to the suit that you have filed. And for the other side to come to court and show reason or show cause why that particular order should fail or why the substantive suit should not even be there in the first place. Now, rather than do that, they kept quiet. No step was taken. And that's why the judge now said, okay, let us go into the substantive matter. Now, at this particular stage, what should have happened? Even the order or status quo shouldn't have been made in the first place. Now, it's a post-election issue, not pre-election. Pre-election issues, you can go to the... Look at the substantive matter. Exactly. You're not, going to, you're not going into substantive matter before the court. Pre-election issues are usually things that bother candidature and a number of other things, whether the person is qualified to run and all of that, or whether the name put forward shouldn't have been put forward in the first place. In other words, all these are pre-election matters. What is before this court is a post-election matter. It has been laid to rest. Now, so does we, the court have the jurisdiction to hear this matter? Not at all. And that's where some of us are a bit concerned. When should they hear the matter? Should they wait until they get to the tribunal? Yes. Because Section 133 of the Electoral Act is very clear. Anyone who is aggrieved in relation to the outcome of an election, and then the Act is clear, it says you cannot challenge uh, the election, yeah, except you go to the election petition tribunal, not even the regular court. You can't go to it. And this issue has actually been laid to rest. Our greatest challenge is our inability to see the laws that are in place, judicial pronouncements that are in place. Maybe some of us decide to be blind to this. And that's why some of us are pinned. These are things that can be avoided. Are you aware, for instance, under Section 53 of the Electoral Act, INEC can decide that in relation to, let's say, for instance, a particular uh, ward 
or polling unit, there is what you call inflated votes. INEC can decide to cancel the election and not make a return in that uh, polling unit. And could also decide that, okay, let us weigh the cancellation vis-a-vis -vis the constituency. If it's such that it's monumental and will affect the outcome of the election, fresh election will be organized for that particular constituency, which is exactly what is going on now. But if I now feel, I don't know, it, it, it's of no moment. Uh, the impact will not be monumental. In other words, with the, 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 the quantum of, of, or quantity of results that have come in are even enough to declare. INEC will go ahead and declare. Is, is, there, in the, is, is there in the electoral act? Because INEC says that uh, um, there was no need for supplementary elections in Bochi. Yes, they because have the right. It had, they have the records and all the, uh, the documents and all the forms already in their possession safe. And I've gone ahead for, with the collation. In the situation where the governor was able to meet with the president to inform the president that this is the situation in my state. A week earlier, the president had already said that I don't want to meddle into any election issues again. Go and sort yourselves out and let the people of your state vote for you. Is there anything wrong with the actions that the governor has taken by going to the president after the president had already said that he doesn't want to be involved in any party activity anymore? No, no, obviously. I, I, I see that as a political move, not a legal move. I see that as an attempt to compromise the president. And I, generally, there is a perception that the president will not meddle or get himself entangled in matters like this. Now, everybody who is a living Nigerian also knows that this is a president who has also taken his destiny into his hands by approaching the court for an outcome of what he perceived at that time as um, an election that he won. And he decided to go to court. Now, having gone to court over the years, would a president like this encourage someone to emb em embark on brigandage or embark on, on lawlessness? If he had taken the step of seeking redress in constitutional means or before a court of competent jurisdiction and has also gone to the election, mind you, all the while that he sought the recovery of his mandate, in quotes, he never went to the high courts. All Excuse the cases, the no, no, all the cases they did were the election petition tribunals. Oh, okay. So he, you now have a president who has taken advantage of constitutionally recognized means of seeking redress. And then the governor is approaching him. So you first ask yourself, why is he approaching the president? Well, it's the court, it's, not the court. The court is the court. Exactly. Yeah, but they're politicians. I mean, they can just, they can always approach the president. No, but, no, but, no, but you see, why would you approach the president over a post-election matter? Is it to seek his counsel whether to throw in the towel? No, no, no. Or he whether said, to what go he said, to court? What, what the I, governor I, said. I watched it. The governor said that he, he, what, he came to see the president to inform him about the situation in his state. Is there anything wrong with that? There is. See, look at it this way. Except you're looking for declaration of a state of emergency. If the crisis of, of such monumental dimension, the president reserved the power under the constitution to declare a state of emergency. First question you ask yourself is, is the situation so tense that you need presidential intervention? leading to declaration of a state of emergency. Mind you, even the declaration of a state of emergency has its own constitutional provision. So why would you go to see the president in the first place? But to he, compromise him or But not? I think he spoke afterwards, and he was saying that, well, uh, I think he was saying that, yes, the, he was, I think, advised to approach. It's only a legal means. That's the way he can seek redress, which is the way or which is the means approved by law. I think that was what he said. Yes. And he was speaking to a newsman. So... Uh, that doesn't give us any indication that the president was going to um, twist anyone. Exactly. So he says, everyone, the, rule, the law is there. Everybody must go with the law. Whatever yeah. the law can, says. Can INEC, can INEC vacate this order? Yes. That, that's the essence of, for instance, just any one of us, even in this room, if an order is made against you because ex party order is like stealing a match, so you get the order, you put it in place, you serve the other side. 
Now, if for any reason the other side is not comfortable with the other, and the other is such that will occasion what you call monumental damage or result in crisis, the party affected by law is expected to go before the court and give reasons why the order must be vacated. And you remember what I said? Ex parte orders have time frames, 14 days. Is it to preserve the rest in this case? Or exactly. What? You want to keep it until... The first question you ask is this. Will the heavens fall? There are instances when ex parte orders are important and must be granted. Do we have a life and death situation in our hands? Is it such that uh, the peace, tranquility, and security of the state is threatened? Is, not, is, is, this, not a, a, is this not a life or death, <laughs> not, not, not physical life or death situation? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, because if, 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 if a sitting governor feels that uh, some things are being done unjustly to him, yes. it's a matter of life and death, not physical life or death. But he's taking these measures to ensure that we slow down slow down the process so that we can all understand where he's coming from, understand where the opposition is coming from. There's nothing wrong in that. No. You see, anybody who believes in the rule of law, and if you think that, I like what uh, 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 Bola Ahmed Tunubu said, Jagaban, he said something, he said, when you have followership, and there's a likelihood that it might result, for instance, into crisis. You talk to your followers and you say to them, because you see, you, if you're a general without a troop, it's a problem. Mm. Now, you can say to your followers, please maintain peace. Let us seek redress. 